Good to see you, Dr. Gallardo. You as well. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Good, thank you. So welcome. I am Sobeda Santana Joseph. I'm a registered nurse and I serve as Director of Oncology Accreditations and Special Programs at Valley Mount Sinai Comprehensive Cancer Care. Thank you for having me today. Hi, Sabeda. Thank you for having me today as well. My name is Dr. Nicole Villardo. I am one of the gynecologic oncologists at Valley Mount Sinai Comprehensive Cancer Care. It is very nice to be here today. So Dr. Villardo and I are here today to answer questions about endometrial cancer from our community. The first question for today's session is, what is the most common type of gynecologic cancer in the U.S. and who is at greater risk, Dr. Villardo? Thank you. So the most common gynecologic cancer in the United States is endometrial cancer, which is the cancer of the lining of the inside of the uterus. It affects approximately one to 2% of women. And it is the fourth most common cause of cancer in women in the United States. Um, women at greatest risk um, are those in their 60s and 70s. That's when endometrial cancer typically presents. Other risk factors include diabetes, obesity, nulliparity, and advancing age. Are there any preventative measures that women can take to reduce their risk? Sure. Um, so there are no screening tests for endometrial cancer or no screening tests that can find endometrial cancer early. Um, however, we usually advise that preventative care and taking care of yourself is the best way to prevent endometrial cancer. Um, so seeing your primary care doctor, maintaining a healthy um, you know, eating habits, exercising, maintaining a healthy weight is going to reduce your risk. Also, maintaining care with your primary gynecologist and seeing them for your annual checkups is a very good way um, to check in and make sure there's nothing new. So another question from our community, what are the symptoms of endometrial cancer that women should watch out mm -hmm. for? So one of the most common symptoms of endometrial cancer is postmenopausal bleeding. So any time a woman goes through menopause, any bleeding after that is abnormal. It could be dark blood, bleeding, abnormal discharge. And so even if it's a small amount, women should talk to their primary gynecologist or primary care doctor immediately um, so that the workup can start. Um, the good thing about women having these symptoms um, or something like bleeding that prompts them to go to a doctor is that most endometrial cancer is then found at an early stage um, because of these symptoms that you know, prompt an evaluation um, and therefore endometrial cancer tends to have a relatively favorable prognosis. Thank you. How is endometrial cancer diagnosed? Sure. So the evaluation for postmenopausal bleeding typically includes a transvaginal ultrasound where they can look at the pelvic organs, such as the uterus, the cervix, the ovaries, and fallopian tubes. Um, and the workup also includes usually an endometrial biopsy where they sample the cells of the inside of the uterus. And the diagnosis of endometrial cancer is typically made on that endometrial biopsy. What treatments or surgical options are available for endometrial cancer? Sure. Treatment options for endometrial cancer usually consist of surgery um, to remove the uterus, cervix, both ovaries and both fallopian tubes. Um, most of the time, um, or some of the time, if this, if the patient is at low risk, then the surgery itself can be curative, and sometimes women don't need any additional treatment. Um, sometimes if there are more aggressive risk factors present on the final pathology, then sometimes women may need additional treatment such as chemotherapy or radiation after surgery. Um, but most of the time, surgery is usually the first treatment for endometrial cancer. When um, is additional treatment required? So additional treatment um, can be required if women present at an advanced stage, um, so at the time of diagnosis if cancer is seen beyond the uterus, um, or if after surgery, although surgery can sometimes be curative for some people at low risk, um, but if after surgery the disease is more aggressive than initially thought um, or has spread beyond the uterus or to adjacent organs, then usually, then sometimes women will require chemotherapy or radiation afterwards. So our community members want to know when should they seek treatment from a gynecologic oncologist? Sure. 
Um, so I think most women, when they first have a symptom, they should immediately go and talk to their primary GYN, primary OBGYN, um, or primary care physician to discuss how they can be worked up further. And most of the time, it is their primary gynecologist that makes the initial diagnosis of an endometrial cancer um, with the endometrial biopsy. And then the primary gynecologist typically then refers the patient um, to myself or a GYN oncologist to discuss treatment options. So how can members of our community get in touch with you, Dr. Mm -hmm. Sure, so members of the community, patients, family, friends can visit our website or call our office at any time and our office will be happy to provide them with the information that they need to find the right provider for them. Thank you so much, Dr.